The greatest turnaround story in college football will continue at the Cotton Bowl. When they say everything is bigger in Texas, it's not just AT&T Stadium. This will be the biggest stage for the Tulane Green Wave since 1940 as they take on an 11-2 USC team in the Cotton Bowl in a new year six. Hello and welcome into the American Studios. Alongside ESPN College Football Analyst, Reedy Angolia and Taylor McCarg, I'm Morgan Uber. For Tulane, the American opponent here in this Cotton Bowl matchup, one of the biggest turnarounds here in American program history. You have a team that goes 2-10 and ten a season ago. They finished the regular season 10-2, and two, win an American Conference Championship. Taylor, what did the Green Wave prove here this season? Everything. Nobody expected Tulane to be in this spot. We talked about them in the preview show at the beginning of the year that this is going to be a bounce-back team for a bowl appearance, not a conference championship and Cotton Bowl appearance. They fixed all of the problems that they had a year ago with injuries and turnovers and a hurricane which yeah. obviously they couldn't control but it really is in a modern day college football era a Cinderella story what they've accomplished year over year. Rainey yeah. what impressed you most about the job here that coach Fritz did? Yeah to me they went through so much a year ago with that hurricane being displaced a lot of people forget that they were living in Birmingham Alabama it's college kids and they just they went through so much and I think mentally it made them stronger it made them tougher and it really set the stage for them this year. We knew they were talented last year they all showed back up this year. Michael Pratt, their quarterback, their defense was flying around. Um, yeah, I think they've done a little better than we thought they were <laughs> going to do. But boy, I, I just think mentally tough, mentally strong. And then they put it together with their play on the field. To have the opportunity to face a USC team, a Heisman winner in Caleb Williams, a team that also turned things around. But they were so close to making it to the college football playoff, lose to Utah in the Pac-12 championship. How did they avoid the thought of disappointment coming into this game? Today? Well, it's a fascinating matchup because USC now has the blueprint for what, in this modern era of college football, completely overhauling your roster. You've got a lot of guys there yeah. that they've just been on campus a few months. And you talk about a letdown spot. They had an opportunity with a win against Utah there in the Final Four, and they're going to be playing for a national championship or on the path to. Instead, you're playing a Group of Five team in the Cotton Bowl, which was not their goal and their objective. So for USC, they've got to rally and find some motivation because, as we know, yeah. Tulane is going to be plenty motivated on the other side. If there's such a thing as a trap game for a New Year's <laughs> Six Bowl game, this is it. I guarantee you there's players on that USC roster that don't know where Tulane is. You know, and it's just it's factual. They don't. And, and so – but one person that, that's not going to have a letdown is Lincoln Riley. So as if you remember, when he was the head coach at Oklahoma two years ago, that Tulane team went there on the road and really should have won that game. So he yeah. knows uh, how good of a coach Willie Fritz is and how good this team is uh, from Tulane. But for the players, still tough, like Taylor said. You, you know, you're, you're in it at the end. You think you're going to go to the college football playoff. You don't get it. You lose to Utah again. And now you're playing Tulane in the Cotton Bowl. Uh, but they, they better show up to play USC because I know Tulane will. USC head coach Lincoln Riley lured away from Oklahoma to go out west to overhaul here this USC team. And really, he's had a history of engineering prolific offenses wherever he's been. And especially with Heisman winner quarterback Caleb Williams, the Trojans, a remarkable season, 11-2, and two, a seven-win increase from a year ago, matching the biggest one-season turnaround in program history. The Trojans' only other two losses came to Utah, including in that Pac-12 championship game knocking USC out of the playoff race. Meanwhile, Tulane is coming off of its first conference championship since 1998 after defeating UCF in the American Championship game. The Green Wave's only conference loss came to the Knights three weeks prior, and Tulane went 11-2 with wins over Big 12 champion Kansas State, and they also went on to end a 32-game home win streak at Cincinnati. A Cotton Bowl victory would give the Green Wave a 10-game improvement in wins, which would mark the biggest turnaround in FBS history. Well, playing New Year's uh, Six Bowl was huge, you know, but it obviously, you know, you want to go, go in and compete and, and uh, you know, test yourself against a team that's, you know, year in and year out, always you know, competing for national titles. So it's a huge challenge for us, but we're looking forward to it. Tulane has been challenged all season and they've shown that they're up for it. 
these, these two teams, as you look head to head, both 11 and two records, USC generating more points per game, but a whole lot of offense from both of these teams. But look at the total defense for USC giving up 415 yards on average. And on average, that's 148 rushing yards. So if you're Tulane running back Tajay Spears, you've got to love the sound of that. This is the first meeting between the two teams since 1946, where USC had the edge, but certainly the Green Wave wanting to keep this historic and really the season that no one else except the Tulane Green Wave saw coming. Uh, when you take a closer look, though, at USC, they have the Heisman winner. Lincoln Riley able to have three Heisman winners over the past six seasons. Caleb Williams, what's the biggest challenge he presents? So I don't have a Heisman vote, but if I did, he would have been my number one pick. Deservedly so. Best player in the country. Can make all the throws. He's got a rocket for an arm, but he's athletic. He can run with the ball, extend plays. I mean, he can do it all. He really can. And just that synergy he has with Lincoln Riley and, and the play calling, and they, they know each other so well and reads defenses. Uh, it's just a dynamic player. So first and foremost, if you're Tulane, you got to stop Caleb Williams. People like us use the phrase arm talent way too much. But if you want to look up a player that has all the arm talent in the world, it's Caleb Williams. Even if you move him off his spot and he's off balance, you saw a couple highlights in this clip here. He gets rid of the ball and it's accurate. And it's something that the, the guy at the next level that you see do it the best is Pat Mahomes. Yeah. And there's a lot in Caleb Williams' game with the ability to throw off platform that reminds me of Pat Mahomes. Oh, by the way, he's a phenomenal athlete yeah. as well. He certainly will present a challenge that Tulane, for all the things they've accomplished this year and the great quarterbacks that they've faced, they haven't seen anything like Caleb Williams on the other side. He played banged up in that Pac-12 championship game. One of the things that coming into this game, it's a question whether or not he's going to play. But if you ask Caleb Williams, he says, I'm playing in this game. Lincoln Riley may uh, have differing opinions, but when you look at what Utah did against them, it's hard to beat a team twice in a season, and Utah did that. What was the blueprint for success that they had, especially in that Pac-12 championship? It's the same thing that Tulane did to Kansas yeah. State earlier in the year when they went to Manhattan and got a win. Get after the quarterback and be physical at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage, because that's what Utah did to USC both times they played them. They got after the quarterback. And they were physical. Yeah. There were some collisions in that game in the Pac-12 championship and that's what Tulane is going to have to do again here. There's some things that Utah is able to do personnel-wise. Tulane won't be able to match. But you're going to have to do your best to try and get Caleb Williams off his spot and get your hits on him when you can. Yeah, and I agree. And then that physicality goes to offense as well. you got to win at the line of scrimmage. you got a great running back in Tajay Spears. And, oh, by the way, your quarterback, Michael Pratt, pretty good runner of the football <laughs> in his own right. Let's start with Spears reading as a former running back yourself with him. I mean, he's coming in. He has seven straight 100 plus rushing yards yeah. a game. It leads the FBS. It's been remarkable what he's done here as of late. What impresses you most about not his game? the biggest running back in the world is the first thing, but he runs much stronger. He's got a good low center of, of balance, center of gravity. He presses the hole. Good vision, good patience, sets up his blocks. Well, good speed in, in the open field as well. So just a very good all around back that's exactly what you want and he gets better with every carry so you need that and again I think the offensive line for Tulane doesn't get the credit they deserve but when you have a back like Tajay Spears there's a reason Tajay Spears had the year he did that offensive line is getting some push up front. He became the first non-quarterback in the American to win the Offensive Player of the Year. But in that American Championship game, we saw his quarterback, Michael Pratt, win the most outstanding player in that game. Spears told me that he loves blocking for Pratt. He would do anything for his guy. So, Taylor, as a former quarterback, when you watch Pratt, what he's been able to do here, especially as of late, how does he replicate that success here on the biggest stage of his life? Yeah, Michael Pratt, if you look at just the statistics for this year, 2,700 yards passing, 25 touchdowns, five interceptions, those are not numbers that are going to jump out at you. Yeah. But I think the key for Michael Pratt is in the biggest games of the season, that's when he had his best performances. Late in the year against SMU in a blowout win, against UCF the second go around in the conference championship, times where they needed him most, that's when he really stepped up. Those six touchdowns, three of which on the ground for, against SMU, were huge. And as the season went along, he's got 10 touchdowns rushing as well. He's a huge part of their red zone offense, running the ball. And you could tell, I spent some time with him at the Manning Passing Academy this summer. Some of his teammates were around because they're just right down the road. His teammates love him. This is a guy yeah. that they rally around, and he's a true leader at the quarterback spot for Tulane. He's got a ton of experience, and I'm going to say something that people say is negative, and I don't know why, because you better be able to do this as a quarterback, and hopefully Taylor agrees with me. He's a great game manager. You have to manage the game as a quarterback. That's not a knock. You don't think Peyton Manning managed the game? 
but was you know an elite quarterback. You can be an elite quarterback, but yeah, you better manage the game. And he does that. He, he you're not going to really throw anything at him that he hasn't seen with that experience. And again, the fact. Uh, that he can run the ball as well gives him that second dimension that USC has to watch out for. Yeah, there are very few quarterbacks in all of college football and even in the NFL as well that you can or that you would want to put everything on their shoulders. Yeah. You want to try and avoid that. And that's why Tulane is so effective is they play great top-down defense. They, they win in special teams as well. They run the ball extremely well. So at the quarterback spot, you don't have to play Superman and put everything on your shoulders. So managing the game, I agree with you, Randy. Yeah. It's not a negative. He goes out and executes their game plan week in and week out. And he doesn't zero in on one receiver. He spreads it around. A bunch of players for Tulane have caught passes this yeah. year. He does a great job taking what the defense gives them. Well, speaking of defense for Tulane and their defense, they've gotten a lot of the limelight this season and respectfully so because of what they've been able to do with Nick Anderson, Dorian Williams, that linebacking core. When you watch those two, what one two punch here, Rini, do they bring to a defense? To me, they're really the difference in this game. I, I think uh, they can run. They're extremely fast. Um, and they just make plays. And that's what you want for your linebackers. Get off blocks and make plays. And when you're going up against the best player in college football and Caleb, Caleb Williams, who can make plays with his feet, you want fast linebackers so they can run and make tackles. And both these guys can do that. I think it may be a blessing in disguise that they had the loss to UCF in the middle of the season the way that they did. John Rice Plumley ran for almost 200 yards against this two-lane defense. I think they learned some things about themselves. Caleb Williams presents some challenges, and John Lawrence Plumley, for as good as he is, Caleb Williams does some things that even Plumley can't do. But I think UCF, the way that they ran the ball against Tulane in that game, Tulane's defense will benefit having experienced that against Caleb Williams in the Cotton Bowl. I agree. You can't underestimate Anderson and Williams' leadership abilities on the field, but even more so off the field. I had Tulane players tell me that if it wasn't for Anderson calling a team meeting last December, speaking a conference championship into existence, they wouldn't be in this spot right now. So the leadership, it's been exemplary for Tulane. Really excited to see what they can do. As we look, though, to the keys for this game, Rainy, this game all comes down to what? To me, it's simple. Win the explosive play battle, right? And so that's on both sides of the, of the ball, right? So if you have more explosive plays offensive, that means you're defense is stopping the other side so to me whoever has more uh, bigger plays the explosive plays wins this game mine's similar to Rini's, but it's been but don't break with Caleb Williams Caleb Williams Heisman Trophy winner they're going to get theirs yeah. on the offensive side you're not going to stop this quarterback right but when they get into the red zone USC does Tulane's defense try and force field goals try and win the turnover battle I think USC but I don't think people realize this as much USC is plus 22 yeah. in the turnover battle over the course of the year. They lead the country. That's a remarkable statistic and a huge reason why they've had that much success. Try and create some turnovers on the other side. Bend but don't break on the defensive yeah, side. Yeah, a ton of takeaways for that defense. That really wasn't that great, yeah. but they got the takeaways, and that's a big deal. Yeah. Tulane clearly the underdog in this game. Number 16 in the country going up against number 10 with the Heisman winner. So when we make our picks here, Rini, who you got in this game? If Tulane plays the way they did when they went into uh, Kansas State with that physicality and they can, you know, win at the line of scrimmage and win that big play battle. I think they can win this game and I ultimately think they do win this game. I think Tulane in an upset. We have seen group of five teams go against a power five team and again in bowl games just like this and the motivation factor which we've talked a lot about yeah. always it feels like benefits the group of five team usc coming off a letdown spot you called it a trap game i agree for all those reasons i like tulane in this game there was a lot of noise going into the American Conference Championship with Willie Fritz potentially leaving Tulane yeah. to go to Georgia Tech. Chose to stay there with his team. I think this team has handled adversity. They can show they can be an underdog or they can play, you know, with that winning pedigree. I have the Tulane Green Wave taking on the USC Trojans and picking up the win. Should be a very exciting bowl game here. I hope we didn't jinx them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 3-0. Well, we'll find out here on January 2nd in the the Cotton Bowl, that one on 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, AT&T Stadium, Arlington, Texas. Number 16, Tulane against number 10, USC.